so in this series we'll learn about the important tags and elements of dhtml this tutorial is about string handling in dhtml in this tutorial we will learn how to measure the length of a string and use some of the string handling functions in dhtml using javascript so let's get started first we we'll start with document html then inside script we are specifying javascript as a scripting language so first we'll display the length of a particular string to the user so first of all we are defining a variable called x value of h x is a string which is dhtml dhtml has a method of string dot length which returns the length of a particular string so variable length is equal to x dot length then we are writing it down onto the document using document dot write method the length of the string is then we are using concatenation operator and concatenating the length of the string then again we are using document dot write to provide a line break our next method is character at method it returns a character at a particular position this method is zero based method so variable ch is equal to x dot character at zero so it will return the character at zeroth position in this case it should return d so we are writing the output using document dot write character at zeroth position is concatenating it ch then document dot write and then providing a line break next method is index of method this method is also zero based method this method returns an integer specifying the position of a particular character where pose is equal to x dot index of here we are getting the index of l as it is zero based method it should return 4 not 5 as the position of l then outputting it the position of l is concatenating it pose then we are ending javascript tag and head inside the body we are writing some basic stuff like uh, this is first tutorial of dhtml then closing all the tags you should not forget to save the file at the end now preview this file into a web browser here yeah. so this is the output the length of string is 5 character at 0th position is d the position of 
L is 4 is expected. So, this was the basic tutorial in the DHTML string handling. Thank you. Hello friends. This is yet another tutorial in the series of DHTML. This tutorial is about introducing yourselves to the numbers in DHTML. Here our aim is to take the input from the user and check against inbuilt function of DHTML to see whether the input is a number or not. If the input is not a number, we show an error message to the user. So let's get started. First, this is our HTML file. We are using JavaScript as our scripting language. JavaScript is a client side language. We are prompting the user to input his age. For this, we are using prompt. The message is enter your age. Now, we are checking whether the input is not a number. This is an inbuilt function age if it is not a number then show an alert message age should be numeric else alert message your age is then we use concatenation operation operator the operation is called concatenating the string then and the script and the head tag clean up the body and HTML tag so save the file then we need to preview it in a browser so this is the file it prompts to enter the age let's write some random stuff so it is showing an error message now Input some valid data, then you need to reload the page. Right, age is 25. So it is showing that our age is 25, which is a number. So this was a pretty basic tutorial on numbers in DHTML. Thank you. Hello, friends. This is the continuation of the series DHTML. In this tutorial, we will learn about date object and DHTML. Date object gives us the freedom to input date data type into the DHTML. It provides us with ease of use when we are working with date object. In this tutorial, our aim is to print the current system date and then extract the month and year out of the date. So let's start. So inside head we are using JavaScript. The language is JavaScript here. Then we are simply writing the date. It is no argument constructor. After it, we are providing 
a line break. Then we are creating an object of the date. The constructor does not accept any argument. Then we print the month. See? The month is in then using the concatenation operator d dot get month. Then we are providing the line break. At last we are extracting the year. The year is get year. JavaScript is case sensitive. So be careful when you are typing. Then we add the head and before it and the script. In the body, we write some meaningful thing like DHTML tutorials, then and the HTML. We are saving the file and then previewing it into the browser. Here, it will show us the current date the month and the year. So this was about date object in DHTML. Thank you. Hello friends. This is another tutorial in the series of DHTML. In this tutorial we will learn about basics of an array. An array is a data structure. Suppose we want to hold the records of 50 students. So we know that a data type is same but there is no need to declare 50 different variables. Instead we can use the array. So basically when the data type is same and we need to save multiple records an array comes in handy. So in this tutorial we will define an array and then iterate through the elements of an array. So let's start. Inside the hag define script language JavaScript. Then we are defining an array using inbuilt array class of size 5. You can always leave the size blank and rather make it dynamic but here we are providing with the size 5. Arrays are zero based elements that is their first element start at zeroth position. Here we are assigning the values to the array elements. Once we are done with it, then we will use the for loop and iterate through the elements of the array. Then we are declaring a variable i, it will be used inside the loop. Then and the for loop i less than array dot length array dot length returns the number of elements that array is holding right now in our case it is 5 then 
we print the element at ith position arr at i. We also put a line break. We are assuming that you are familiar with the syntax of for loops. Then we end the script tag and head. Inside the body, we write dhtml tutes and then we end the script. So if you preview the script in the browser, it will show us the iteration of the array 1 to 5. Let us save this page and preview it in a browser. So this is the output. So it is showing the elements of an array. So this was a pretty basic tutorial on DHTML arrays. Thank you. Hello friends. This is another tutorial in the series of DHTML. Today we will learn about creating custom objects in DHTML. An object is an instance of a class. A class represents a real world entity. There are inbuilt classes in DHTML like image and array. Date is also an inbuilt class. There are two types of class that can be instantiated. The first object is parameterless and the other needs to have parameters to instantiate it. So in this tutorial, we will create our custom object and set its properties and then show the properties to the user. In DHTML, declaration of custom object is similar to a function. Here we are defining the object named user object. That's it. Here we have defined the, a custom object but it doesn't do anything. We need to set its properties is equal to parameter this dot last name is equal to Smith. So what we are doing is assigning the first name property to the parameter and the last name property to Smith. So this is our custom object. Now we need to create an object that is we need to instantiate this object is where v is equal to new user object John. It will assign first name property with the value of John. Then we are providing the alert box v dot first name. We are basically just uh, providing the alert boxes to show the properties of our custom created object last name. There is no need to assign the value of last name as it is already defined when we create the object. Then we end the script tag. Then we when preview the script into the browser the output will be like this. So this is the alert on the first name and this is the last name. So it was a tutorial about creating custom objects in the HTML. Thank you. Hello friends. This is another tutorial in the series of DHTML. Hope you are enjoying this series. In this tutorial we will learn about how to detect the browser of the user. In the old days 
not all the browsers support DHTML and JavaScript. So as a developer, one needs to get aware of the browser the user is using. There is also a tag called a no script which is used when JavaScript is not enabled in the browser. So it is always a good coding practice to include a backup type when JavaScript is not enabled in any of the browser. DHTML supports a method called navigator.useragent which returns a string comprising of the user's browser. One can extract the user agent from that string and later on depending upon that user agent design his pages. So let's start some coding. We use JavaScript. So here write language JavaScript. Then using navigator dot user agent. This method returns a string comprising of the user's browser. Then we simply show the alert message and and the script. So simple as that. So once we preview the script into a browser, it will show the message depicting the browser of the user. So let's preview the script. Here, this is showing the complete string of the browser. One should note that the original browser is located in between. In this case it is Chrome. So that was all about detecting the user's browser using DHTML. Thank you. Hello friends. This is another tutorial in the series of DHTML. Hope you are enjoying this series. In this tutorial we will learn about how to detect the browser of the user. In the old days not all the browsers support DHTML and JavaScript. So as a developer one needs to get aware of the browser the user is using. There is also a tag called a no script which is used when JavaScript is not enabled in the browser. So it is always a good coding practice to include a backup type when JavaScript is not enabled in any of the browser. DHTML supports a method called navigator.useragent which returns a string comprising of the user's browser. One can extract the user agent from that string and later on depending upon that user agent design his pages. So let's start some coding. We use JavaScript. So here write language JavaScript. Then using navigator dot user agent. This method returns a string comprising of the user's browser. Then we simply show the alert message and and the script. So simple as that. So once we preview the script into a browser it will show the message depicting the browser of the user. So let's preview the script.
here. This is showing the complete string of the browser. One should note that the original browser is located in between. In this case, it is Chrome. So, that was all about detecting the user's browser using DHTML. Thank you. Welcome, friends. This is another tutorial in the series of DHTML. In this tutorial, we'll learn about managing browser windows using DHTML. So, browser windows are managed using the window object. So, the window object is the main object that we are manipulating in this tutorial. So, if you are dealing with a window object, you must be careful as many websites use this object to allow pop-ups. Now, many modern browsers block the pop-up windows as they are annoying to the user. So, whenever you are using the window object to open up a new window or resize a window, be careful. If you are using for a noble purpose, then you must use it, otherwise you should not, as it is completely dependent on the user to disable the script that is using the window object. So, let us jump into some coding and uh, our aim is we will create two buttons. On clicking the first button, we will resize the window and clicking on the another button, will open up a completely new window. So here is the code. First we start with HTML then head. After that we write script language is equal to JavaScript then inside the JavaScript define a function called resize me if you do not know about functions in JavaScript please refer to our previous tutorial about functions in DHTML here this function resize the window window dot resize to this method accepts two parameter first is the width and the other is the height we are specifying width and width is equal to 600 and height is equal to also 600 so it will resize the window in the dimensions of 600 cross 600 the dimensions are given in pixels. Another function is function open new. When we call this function, this function will cause a new window to be opened. The method here is window dot open. The first one, the first argument is the URL to be opened. We are giving the relative path to the function.html file. Other is the name of the window, the title of the window. We are providing the title here is demo. Third argument is optional. This argument specifies that the window should be open with custom width and height with menu bar and status bar if we omit this argument the window will be opened in the same tab so here we end the javascript and then the head inside the body we put Two button on clicking the first first button we resize the window on clicking it 
we call resize me function resize me then closing the button tag then we open up another button tag on clicking this button we open up a complete new window open new function is called open new then we close the button tag and the paragraph so this is the script please do not forget to save the file when we preview the script into the browser it will look like this when we click on resize me it will resize the entire window here the window is being resized then if we click on open new it will open up a new window here. the new window is opened and function.html is being shown so this was about managing browser windows using dhtml thank you hello friends this is the continuation of our series dhtml in this tutorial we will learn about managing frame sets using dhtml frame sets are used to put the frames to load up another web pages inside the same web page it gives developers the freedom to load one or more pages inside the same web page it is also controversial as compared to the managing windows with dhtml as it is not supported by most of the browser developers should be concerned when using the tag so in this tutorial we will load a frame set using dhtml so let's start first we start html tag then the head inside the head we put up script language is equal to javascript then the function the function returns blank html document the specified color return html body background color is equal to c00ff slash body slash html so this is returning a blank document then we end a script Then comes the frame set. It is occupying rows 50 and remaining columns. Then inside the frame set, we are specifying a frame with ID frame 1. The source file here is nav.htm. Then we are ending the frame set and also the head and the htm. Please do not forget to save the file. When we preview this script into a browser, it will load the nav.html file inside a frame set. Let us preview this into a browser here. So it is showing the file nav.html here. And entire attributes or the entire content of nav.html is loaded inside a frame. So this tutorial was about managing frames using dhtml and javascript. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you. Welcome friends. This is yet 
another tutorial in the series of DHTML. In this tutorial, we'll learn about validating text field using DHTML. So, our aim here is that we will provide a password field and then check for the length of a password. If the password does not satisfy the minimum length requirement, we will show an alert message and notify the user. So it will be done using DHTML functions. So inside the script, we define a function named check length. If you are new to functions in DHTML, please check our previous tutorial on functions. Function check length. Now we are defining a variable called input which gets its value using document dot get element by id dot value so this method retrieves the value of the element having id pwd then we measure the length of that input using input dot length so we declare a variable called len and measure the length of the input string. As we know, string dot length method provides us with the length of a particular string. Then we check if the length is less than six. If length is less than six, then show an alert box. Minimum length is 6 else show success and tell them it is ok and then end the function and the javascript inside the body define a form then provide a password field so input type is equal to password name of the field is password the id is pwd this is the id that we have mentioned in javascript and on clicking so this is it then we provide the submit button on clicking the submit button we check the length of the password so input type submit name of the field is submit the value is check me on clicking the button we are calling the function check length then close the form tag and the body and then save the file so let us preview the script into a browser this is the output so if we provide a random input of the length less than 6 it will give us an error message here it says that minimum length should be at least 6 and if the length is more than 6 then it will show the message ok here so here we learned how to validate a field using DHTML thank you welcome friends this is the continuation of our series DHTML in this tutorial, we will learn about event handling in DHTML. Without events, there would be no dynamic HTML. So in DHTML, the first D stands for dynamic, which refers to the event-based programming model of the DHTML. So what is an event? Event is an occurrence of a process. For 
any dynamic mechanism some kind of trigger is needed there are two kinds of triggers for events the first is user generated this type of triggers are like clicking the mouse or mouse up or mouse down events these events are generated by the user the other is system generated this type of events are like when the page is being completely loaded or the page is being unloaded window is being closed and such in scripting you need a way to connect the occurrence of an event that is an element needs to subscribe to an event events are said to be bound to an element an element may trigger events when you click it or either you put the cursor on it that is you are putting your mouse on it so basically if we need to capture an event and do some processing on it we need to add a function and then subscribe to that event so in our example we will put up a text box and when we type in that text box we are subscribing to the event of the text box that is on create press event whenever a key is pressed we are showing an alert box so let's start first start the html tag then the head then in the script put javascript then there is the function the function is called subscriber here this function will be called when a key print event occurs it says you press a key this is a pretty basic function we are just getting ourselves notified and familiar with events and then and the script and the body we need to have an input box and put type is equal to text on key press event a function needs to be called the function we call is subscriber so when a key is pressed we call the function subscriber which will show the alert that you pressed a key so this is the most important part here then and the body and the html then save the file when we preview this file it will look like this so here when we press a keyboard key it will show the message here we press the key another times we press the key it will show this message that's how it goes so it was about event handling in dhtml thank you Welcome friends this is the continuation of our series in this tutorial we will learn about navigation using dhtml by navigation we mean to either surf another web page or to go back in the history we could also provide a drop down list and by selecting an element we could go to that particular link however one needs to be careful when using dhtml to navigate through web pages as not all of the techniques are supported in all of the browser so as a developer one should have a backup script when there is no support for the script now in our case in this tutorial we will define a function and then invoke the function when user clicks on a button
when the function is invoked the user is redirected to the home page of the Google so let's start start with the HTML tag then the head inside the head define scripting language to JavaScript then define the function navigate JavaScript has inbuilt object location whose property href is used to navigate through a page is accept the URL of the web page to navigate and end the function we can also retrieve the cookie set by a particular domain using the document dot cookie then end the head inside the body we provide a button on clicking the button we invoke the function so on click work the function navigate the button says go to google and then the end the button then save the file when we preview this in a web browser it will look like this here when we click on the button, we will redirect to the web page of the Google. So let's click the button. So it is loading. Here we can see that we are redirected to the home page of the Google. So this was a tutorial on navigating a web page using DHTML. Thank you. Welcome, friends. This is yet another tutorial in the series of HTML. If you have missed any of the previous tutorial, we advise you to look at them. In this tutorial, we will learn about how to assign global style sheets. Global style sheet is applied to all the elements in a web page. So, style sheets are used to reduce the amount of styling needed to style a particular element once we provide global style sheet every element in a web page is styled according to that so there is no need to reinvent the wheel every time so let's start and start with the html tag then start the head now in the head Define the style. Style type equal to text CSS. It defines that the upcoming document is a cascading style sheet document. Then for every paragraph element, we define font. size 14 points and color red and then close the style element so inside the head is the heart of our globally style sheets and then close the head here we write down the element whom we want to style and then provide the CSS specifications for it now inside the body when we write any paragraph it will be styled according to the style we provided above let's write this is a style paragraph then end it and the body 
and then the HTML and then save the file. When preview, we preview this file, the paragraph will be styled as the font having the size 14 points and its font color being red. So let's preview it here. The font size is 14 and it is red in color. So it was about giving globally style sheets in DHTML. Thank you. Welcome friends. This is another tutorial in the series of DHTML. In this tutorial we will learn how to achieve visual effects using DHTML. So in this tutorial our aim is to perform image rollovers. In image rollover when you hover your mouse onto the image the image changes and in place of the earlier image in place of the previous image a brand new image is displayed and when you put your mouse out of that image the original image is displayed again so let us jump into the script so this is the web page which performs image rollover so there are two functions inside javascript first is mouse hold the other is mouse out when we first look at the image it is given the id of image when we hover the mouse on the image mouse hold function is called inside the body of mouse hold function we are getting the reference of that image using document dot get element by id method and then changing the source of the image to our new image so it changes the image when we hover our mouse on the image next when we put our mouse out of that image mouse outer function is called so inside the body of mouse art function we use document or get element by id method and change the source to the previous image so the image gets changed and the source is set to the previous image so this is how rollovers are achieved then save the file and preview it in a browser so it looks like this when we hover our mouse the image changes and we put our mouse out of that image the image also changes thus giving the effect of an image rollover so this was about achieving visual effects using dhtml thank you welcome friends this is another tutorial in the series of dhtml using dhtml we can also add dynamic content on the document the document has so many methods that are useful to add dynamic content. The dynamic content can be anything from string to any image or any input type. So in this tutorial we will add buttons dynamically on the fly. So let's dig into the code right now. So this is the R script the main function is the add element function when we click on the button which is here in the paragraph section add element function is invoked inside the add element we use document dot create element method it creates a new element which is to be added to the document then we use element dot set attribute to set the type of that input here the type is button then we set its name and then the value after that we get a reference to the span one then append the newly created element to the span one we can create as many buttons as we wish. So
so when we preview it in a web browser and click on the button which says add dynamically buttons will be added on the document so let's save the script and preview it in a browser so it looks like this when we click on the add button a newly created button will be added here again more we click the more the number of buttons on the screen appears so this was about creating dynamic content using DHTML thank you